Hello everyone, this is Dr. Carolyn Maria, working as an assistant professor in Loyola College of Education, Chennai. The title of the course is Teaching and Learning, in which we are going to see Unit 1, Nature of Learning and Teaching. This video lecture is going to focus on the learning meaning definition, principles of learning, rote learning versus meaningful learning, techniques for active learning and their implications, self-learning, teaching, meaning, definitions and characteristics of good teaching. Let's start what is learning. Life begins from a single cell. At the time of birth, the child knows only to cry and smile. Later on, the child keeps learning one after the other with the environmental influence. Child keeps learning through the sense organs. That's why the sense organs are otherwise called as gateways of knowledge. Through eyes, 75% of learning. Through ears, 13% of learning. Through skin, 6%. And through taste and smell, 33% 3, 3 of learning happens to every child. These are the steps of learning. First, the child observes, watch carefully what is happening. Then try to use the sense organs and sensory methods like listening, touching and tasting. Then start to ask why, how, why not and all when something happens. And imitate or copy the same action saying, let me do it for myself. Then learning takes place by repeating the action again and again. Then start to ask questions to observe them so that they can show they are able to do the activity they have just learnt. And then at last they perform the action for themselves having learnt something. So it starts from observation and it is repeated through imitation and at last it is learnt. Learning is a, a relatively permanent change in the behavior, just a behavior modification. So far, whatever was unknown, when a person becomes known to that, that is what is called as learning, which occurs as a result of activity, training, practice or experience. The psychological point of view with regard to learning is, learning implies making the most appropriate stimuli to the response. Learning is continuous, it starts from womb and it ends in tool. According to modern psychologists, learning is a reinforced practice where learning when is reinforced with positive as well as negative reinforcement, it creates a permanent change in the behavior. Many psychologists have defined learning. Let's see few definitions. According to Gates and others, learning is the modification of behavior through experience and training. Boss said, learning is the process by which individual acquires various habits, knowledge, attitudes that are necessary to meet the demands of life in general. Gardner Murphy said, the term learning covers every modification of behavior to the environmental requirements to be met. The amount of learning proficiency achieved divided by time taken to achieve the amount of learning is equal to the rate of learning. The learner may be an active learner or a passive learner. Learning process may be formal or informal, desirable or undesirable. Learning experience may be a positive or negative learning experience. The positive learning experience will strengthen the motivation. Negative learning experience will weaken the motivation. Learning environment may be a pleasant or unpleasant learning environment. And the teacher may be an effective teacher or an ineffective teacher. Learning is an active process which is stimulated or guided by internal and external factors for a desirable outcome. Let's see the outcomes of learning. Learning brings desirable changes in the behavior in relation to cognitive, affective and psychomotor domains. Attaining the teaching learning objectives is the outcome of learning. It occurs essential knowledge, skills, applications, attitudes and interest of the student. It helps the student to attain the proper growth and development with regard to all the dimensions of 
physical, cognitive, social, emotional, moral, aesthetic and language development. It helps the student to attain the balanced personality, all round development, as well as to attain the proper adjustment. The adjustment is accepting something new without any complaint. That is what is called as adjustment and it is the key for success. Learning helps to help a person to realize the goal of life for achievement. What is the mere purpose of learning if every learner understands automatically they achieve the goal in their life? What are the factors determining learning? The general attitude and personality of the teacher and student, quality of the teaching aids, difficulty level of the content and learner's readiness, physical teaching learning environment, teaching methods, reinforcement technique, learner's intelligence, physical and psychological well-being of the students are the factors which are determining the learning. Let's see the individual differences in learning. Each and every individual is different. Single teacher in a 45 minutes class teaches one single concept using one methodology. At the end of the class, if the teacher is conducting a test, each student scores differently. That is the individual difference. That is the influence of heredity, environment, race, nationality, economic condition, gender, physical characteristics, mental abilities, motor abilities, personality traits, interest, aptitude, attitude. Each of all these traits are different for different people. The principles of learning. The basic principles let's discuss. Learning involves participation. Active participation of the learner which improves the motivation that reinforces the learning process. They can learn very quickly and retain it for a longer time if they are involved in the learning process. Repetition. Repetition is essential with regard to learning. To gain the full benefit of learned behavior, one must keep on overlearn, repeat, recall to ensure the smooth performance and the minimum forgetting at a later date. Relevance. Whatever is learned, learned it should be focusing on the problems which the students are having and if the problem centered learning is there and if the learning is interesting for the students it will create a sort of permanent impact in them and transference learning can go for a three kinds of transfer it can apply the knowledge of the skills learned, the positive transfer whatever is learned in the previous experience which can enhance the further learning that is called as positive transfer. The one who has learned the skill of driving the two-wheeler, it will help the person to go for four-wheeler. Negative transfer is the previous learning will uh, serve as a stumbling block or a hindrance for the further learning. For an example, mother tongue is serving as a stumbling block for uh, learning English or any other language. Because whenever we are asked to write something, we think in our mother tongue, then we translate it in our uh, in the foreign language. Then learning plays a major role in tra zero transfer also. Here no observable effect is seen. For an example, a person good at karate, it is not going to have any impact in his handwriting. Then at the last principle is feedback. Whenever a person has learned something, immediate feedback should be given. So the feedback mechanism gives the learners an information on their progress, providing reinforcement for their learning. Let's see what is rote learning. Rote learning is the memorization of information based on the repetition. For an example, memorizing the alphabets, numbers, multiplication tables, etc. A common rote learning technique is preparing quickly for a test is also known as cramming. What are the characteristics of rote learning? Rote learning is simply the storage of data in the brain without any understanding. It does not require any understanding or for, of the data to be stored. Memorization technique based on the repetition. The aim of rote learning is the one will be quickly to recall the meaning and the matter of more one repeats it. What are the practices which will promote the rote learning? Lecture method, chalk and talk method, 
copying the content from the textbook to the chalkboard then asking the students to copy the same in their notebooks imposition writing the same thing for so many times recitation keep on repeating talking then descriptive writing writing essay all these are the rote learning practices what are the advantages of rote learning rote learning has been found to change the structure of the brain because repeatedly if we are doing something it will have its own impact in the brain and it will help us to mastery over the foundational knowledge with regard to alphabets numbers number names and multiplication tables etc and it helps us to recall more information overall retain the information for life poor short term memory can make it difficult to master reading the mathematical concepts and rote learning is the ability to quickly recall the basic facts to create automaticity so that the student will know something without having to think about for an example if i am just asking the spelling for the number 15 you will be able to immediately tell because you have already by hearted this when you were a small child during your school days to speed up the learning multiplication tables mathematics facts phonics spelling grammar structure all these are the advantages of rote learning what are the disadvantages of rote learning it can be repetitive repetitive and easy to lose the focus it doesn't allow the deeper understanding of the subject so the people students may not have good encouragement for using the social skill because they'll be just sitting all alone and learning this and no connection between the new knowledge and the previous knowledge it may result in a wrong impression or understanding of a concept how are we going to prevent rote learning by encouraging classroom participation with activities and discussions by understanding the concepts better will significantly reduce the need for mugging up of the concept before the examination simplify the content into different compartmentalized manner and teach the students properly and introducing a lot of memory techniques with proper understanding will be helpful for the students to prevent the rote learning let's focus on meaningful learning David Osbell the psychologist who advanced the theory which contrasted the meaningful learning from rote learning in his view to learn meaningfully students must relate the new knowledge to what they already know that is known to unknown simple to complex two important goals of all types of learning include retention and transfer retention is the ability to remember the material for later time transfer is the ability to use the prior knowledge to solve the coming new problems students achieve meaningful learning when both of these goals are fulfilled meaningful learning involves the complete understanding of whatever the students is learning how all the pieces of the entire concept fit together the knowledge gained through meaningful learning applies to the new learning situations and learning stays with the students for a lifetime meaningful learning is active constructive and long lasting but most importantly it allows the students to be fully engaged in the learning process learned information is completely understood and can now be used to make connections with other previous knowledge and aiding for further understanding these are the characteristics of meaningful learning when you are learning with complete involvement automatically we will be active for an example if i am giving you a new mobile apple mobile if i am giving you if you want to learn all the applications in the apple mobile you will be fully excited you will be very actively participating in learning the uh, applications of apple mobile and if you are not able to understand any application you seek the help of the ones those who are already using the apple mobile so by which you are collaborating and you are constructing your own methodology like different kind of album or different storage devices and all that once you have constructed all that you own that you you just go for a password that is authentic like you know you can have your own password and which you need not share to other people and this meaningful learning will help a person to get the goal directed 
so after completion of all the uh, learning applications in apple mobile you would have a satisfaction that you knew something about apple let's now focus on the importance of meaningful learning meaningful learning teaches the students to the important cognitive skills they use it throughout their life the cognitive skills are what the students use to evaluate analyze remember and make comparisons in the long run meaningful learning is most effective way for the students to engage in learning deliberate effort to link the new knowledge with the higher order concepts in cognitive structure is possible with regard to the mean, meaningful learning learning related to experiences with events or objects are called as meaningful learning there are two process of meaningful learning one is reception another one is discovery reception is receiving all the information meaningfully with regard to verbal learning discovery is finding out something through concept formation and finding the solution for the problem on their own that is another kind of meaningful learning what are the advantages of meaningful learning it encourages the students not for memorization but only for understanding it encourages active learning techniques it focuses on the outcome of the learning process relating new information to the prior knowledge Reten retention is more even for lifetime what are the tips for promoting meaningful learning take it into consideration the previous knowledge of the students we can make use of all the activities that are of the interest of the students create a motivational environment to learn make use of the debates group work games analogies illustration previous organization and all use examples all the time in order to promote the meaningful learning students should learn with interest so that is how the learning should be arranged and we can organize the classroom discussions design highly relevant learning activities to promote the meaningful learning now what is the technique of active learning active learning is a method of learning in which the students are actively or experientially involved in the learning process it is one way complementing the meaningful learning different levels of active learning depending upon the students involvement active learning techniques cause the student to engage with the subject matter rather than passively taking in information examples of active learning are brainstorming session discussion teaching journaling group work focusing listening focus listening formulating questions note taking annotating role playing case studies group project think pair share game peer teaching debates etc the elements of active learning are students engage the material through reading writing talking listening and reflecting what are the techniques of active learning write down what we know already then ask questions while reading make notes of the main points in our own words summarize what is read then explain what is learned to someone else complete all course activities not just reading alone by which we can achieve the active learning what are the implications of active learning students can take greater ownership of their learning it will improve critical thinking and decision making skills it will boost the creativity in every student active learning promotes the real world problem solving it develops the collaborative skills it encourages risk taking it requires students preparation and it increases the engagement in students as well as the retention now what do you mean by self learning self learning is defined as the method of garnering the information and after processing and retaining it without taking the help of another individual it is a modern way of learning that helps a person to teach himself the skills knowledge that will provide relevant to the daily activities it provides the ability to identify the problems and quickly look for the solution now we'll proceed to what is teaching teaching is a process to communicate the knowledge to develop understanding and to provide experiences 
to develop the skills in an individual irrespective of his or her educational status. There are three components of teaching, teacher, student and the content material. There are three stages in teaching. Before teaching, that is pre-active stage, that is pre-teaching, wherein we are expected to give the motivation to prepare the minds of the learners to learn the newer task. Then the interactive stage where the actual teaching happens. Here we are imparting the instruction, information, knowledge, experience and skills to the students. Then post-active stage after teaching, we need to go for a sum up, review and recapitalization. There are different types of teachers. Good teachers are more concerned about the welfare of the students. Bad teachers do not show much interest in the welfare of the student. Competent teachers always conscious about completing the task and the syllabus. Incompetent teachers miserably fail in completing the task. Effective teachers always strive for creating a permanent impact in students. Ineffective teachers lack the interest and involvement in teaching. You can find out which category you want to follow. There are many psychologists who have given a definition for teaching. According to Morrison, teaching is an intimate contact between the more matured personality and the less matured personality. More matured personality is the teacher and the less matured personality is the student. Jackson defined teaching is the face-to-face -face encounters between the two or more persons, one of whom is the teacher, intend to affect the certain changes in the students. Yenel Gay, he defined teaching as the interpersonal influence aimed at changing the behavior of the potential of another person. Clerk said, Teaching refers to the activities that are designed and performed to produce the student's behavior. What are the good characteristics of teaching? Teaching is a complete social process undertaken by the society for the society. Teaching is helping the students to get a lot of information wherein the teachers are expected to give the information. Communication of knowledge is essential part of teaching. Teaching is an interactive process between the student and the teaching sources, which is essential for the guidance, progress and development of students. Teaching is a process of development and learning. Teaching causes the change in the behavior. What are the characteristics of good teaching? Teaching is an art as well as science. It is a face-to-face -face encounter, which can be observable, measurable and modifiable. It is a skilled occupation where every successful teacher is expected to know the general methods of teaching learning situations. It facilitates the learning in students. Teaching is both conscious and unconscious process. It is from memory level to the reflective level. It is a continuous process of training, conditioning, instruction and indoctrination of the mind. The key takeaway messages are Teaching is a complete social process undertaken for the society and by the society. Learning takes place by repeating the action again and again. Meaningful learning is active, constructive and long-lasting. But most importantly, it allows the students to be fully engaged in the learning process. As a teacher, how will you improve the teaching style to address your students' changing needs? Plan your strategies to improve meaningful learning in your students. For further information, kindly refer to these sources. Thank you for listening. Wish you all good luck.